Next, I want to talk about the generalization of Ohm's law for alternating current circuits. If a voltage is varying as V naught sine omega t, and it looks like a sine wave like this, the current is going to be varying as I naught sine omega t minus phi. That means it has a sinusoidal shape too, except it's going to be shifted over by that amount called the phase shift. Phase shift is going to be the amount by which two of these uh, troughs or crests on the, on the I and a V sine waves are, are apart from one another. But the Ohm's law for AC circuits is going to relate the two amplitudes. Notice that the current amplitude doesn't have to equal the voltage amplitude. In fact, in general, it won't be. In general, they're going to be related by a constant of proportionality. I naught will equal V naught divided by Z, where Z is called the impedance of the circuit. It's the general case of resistance, and it adds to the resistance the case of inductors and capacitors that might be present in an AC circuit. The general form for impedance is always equal to the square root of R squared plus the, quanti the parenthesis uh, quantity square of X sub L minus X sub C. The resistance is one part of the impedance, and the inductor and the, re and the capacitor have terms that look like resistance called the, the inductive and capacitive reactants. These quantities X sub L and X sub C are kind of like resistances from a capacitor and an inductor. It turns out the phase shift is going to be related to this X sub L and X sub C, and the resistance as follows. The tangent of the phase shift equals X sub L minus X sub C over R. So what is this impedance? This is really at the heart of how we predict our Ohm's law-like equation for V naught equals I naught Z. The general form of impedance, as I said, is square root of R squared plus X sub L minus X sub C squared. These two things are called reactances, and there's one kind for inductors and one kind for capacitors. If there's no capacitors or, react or, or inductors, of course, then Z just equals R. These reactances are defined as follows. X sub L equals omega times L, the angular frequency of the circuit, times the inductance of the, of the inductor. And X sub C is equal to 1 over omega C. Omega, again, is the frequency at which you're driving the circuit, and C is the capacitance of the capacitor. What this says is that uh, something interesting happens, and that is that inductive reactants get bigger whenever omega is. Whenever you're trying to volt drive the voltage with a, a, a really big, big frequency, then the inductive reactance gets bigger. It acts like a stronger and stronger resistor. That makes sense because, the, remember, the voltage drop is related to the change in current. And so whenever the, the current's changing more rapidly, that's when omega is large. The capacitance react capacitive reactance gets bigger whenever omega is smaller. And it happens when um, we're driving the, the voltage more and more slowly. So that happens when, if you think about it, uh, we go to a really, really slow um, uh, voltage source. Then what's happening is you're almost having a direct current source, and no current actually leaps across the capacitor. We'll study why it's so soon, but I just want you to know that these two kinds of reactances change as a function of the frequency at which you're driving the circuit. So they act, the inductor and the capacitor act like bigger or smaller resistances in opposite ways, and it crucially depends on how fast you're driving the circuit.